So another later on in my Linux journey, there was this wonderful blocky game that came out. A lot of you might recognize it as a game called Minecraft. And it was very, very popular. And a lot of people played it. And being as it was written in Java, it was really easy to make a Linux version for. So when I first started playing it, it was way back in alpha. So it would have been like 2010-ish time frame, 2011. And this was very early when the graphics weren't as nice and they didn't have really nice, oh, what? Textures for everything. And it was really cool. It was really popular. It fell out a little bit and then it came back because of YouTube. It's safe for YouTube, obviously. Because, you know, all the YouTubers have to do their Minecraft thing. And because it's safe and it will keep their monetization. Oh. My Minecraft was a different beast than what it is now. It was somewhat like chunkier, but at the same time, a lot of people played it. And so the way I ended up playing it at first was with a single player launcher. Because I didn't exactly pay for it. <laughs> so this is the exact same launcher that I had used for like that whole time. Um, Minecraft SP, it would basically check for an update and then... So you, it would check for an update and download it and install it just like it was a regular Minecraft launcher, but it didn't log you in. So you could pick your username. And the only way that you could really play multiplayer with it was if you got the Minecraft server and you enabled offline mode in the server. Because for some reason, Notch decided that it was okay, okay to not need to authenticate Minecraft with the servers to make sure that you're logged into a real account if you really wanted to. Which was really cool, because later on down the road, during the beta time frame, I did end up paying for Minecraft. But... I paid for it because I had a really fun time with it. So this was also back in the time when modding for Minecraft meant that you had to dig into the Minecraft jar in your, like, Minecraft folder, wherever it is that it downloads all the Minecraft data to, and you had to, like, manually replace, like, different portions of it in order to get it to work. So that's how I got things like Plastic Craft to work, which... I think is has not been updated for almost a decade and that kind of thing. So it's also how you had to install your texture packs if you wanted to switch out texture packs as you directly over at the Minecraft jar. And so it was sometimes easier to just like back up your Minecraft jar and have a vanilla one so that you could like replace it later and mess around with it. But, again, this is before they had the profiles thing and everything else as well in the launcher. And I was using a single-player launcher, which didn't have some of the features that maybe the actual launcher had that you got when you paid for it. But th this is how I played Minecraft for quite a while. And that would include, like, adding turret mods and things like that. And this is how I had actually gotten even cousins and friends into Minecraft, was giving them this launcher. And then it took off from there. And so simply by installing the simple launcher, you could have a cool experience. I don't think it works anymore, but maybe it does. I think it broke on me. That's okay. But that's how you, that's how you could have an experience with like your friends. And if you go back and look at many of the early screenshots and what all of it, 
it was pretty cool. So this is basically what you would be greeted with back in alpha, and this is 1.2.6 alpha. Um, yeah, so you had all the really nice stuff, fancy controls. Um, can I change? Uh, yeah, I can. So you, you'd basically resize it. That fancy gooey thing you guys are used to. And yes, I played very windowed most of the time. Uh, yeah, there's no scaled UI at all. Let me change that to E. I always changed inventory to E because it was easier to reach. So that was always fun to mess with every time I had a new thing. How Oh, dang, there's a world here. So yeah, this is what the world of Minecraft looked like. And I, I remember spending countless hours digging holes and stuff like that. Come on, buddy. It's got to load all the terrain. And I mean, if you, come on, you can do it. The trees were all the same. Rock looked all the same. Everything was just beautiful. Well, I, not, not the same as what it is currently. You still had pigs. Gravel was ugly. Not as nice as it is now. was very sand-like in the generation. You had all these cool caves that you can mess with and floating islands and whatnot. They weren't like... The, the map generation was very, very interesting. I mean, if you really... Yeah, see, game of the year back in... Way back when. But yeah, MultiMC makes it easy so you can like check that kind of stuff out too, which is really, really cool. Why do I keep going back to that? But yeah, I had that on an external hard drive so I could take it to school with me and play it wherever I went to, basically. Saves didn't always follow me, but I think I usually played it on my laptop actually a lot of the time. Of course, modding's gotten better over the last little while with Forge and everything else to make mod loading much, much easier. But the other thing that we had at the time, too, was because Minecraft was based on Java. Oh, somebody had to come along and make something that was, would run a bit better. And this actually ran better on my hardware at the time as well than Minecraft did somewhat. And that was Mindtest, which was basically a clone of Minecraft, but open source written in C++. And it's still, again, still updated to this day. And it's got modding built into it with Lua. And I even did my own, I think. Give me a second, I'll look for it. Okay, so I had built a weapons mod for Mindtest. So I don't think I ever really put it up, but you had bats made of different things. Let's see, baseball bat made of wood, bronze bat, diamond, gold club, mese bat, because it actually had a larger variety of ores in mine test than, oh, Minecraft had. So let me open the stone bat here. It's really, really tiny, but... So the modding for, again, used Lua scripts. So I had basically figured out Lua just enough to make mo the mods work. So I could put together all the, all the data for the bats and how to craft it as well. So stealing it across the board. And of course, this was like your three by three crafting array in mind test because you didn't build a workbench 
you basically had access to three by you have access to three by three crafting in mind test right off the bat and so that's basically what i did is used that so depending on what you're looking for i mean minecraft of course has like quite the number of extensive mods and it but mine test kind of had that modding before and it was easier but it never really had the community backing of it to make it take off like minecraft did per se but all the mods you can install straight from mine test as well so that that's basically how i did my voxel gaming back in the day when it came out because i was using linux as a daily driver when minecraft came out and it was really cool to see mine test work and to add multiplayer then too which was really interesting but yeah that that's basically minecraft and mine test if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like comment subscribe share the video algorithm really seems to like that and it actually helps it get directly out to more people and you can even join the chat and interact when I'm not online or what have you in Discord, Gilded, XMPP, and check out my, my streaming stuff. Links are all in the description places, and I will see you guys later.